Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I am excited to share with you a new gun that I've just recently set up, and that is my new MP5K. And before you attack me in the comments, I know this is not an actual HK MP5K. This is a clone made by PTR, making this the PTR 9KT, and is the MP5K version of their MP5 style of guns that they offer. And in form and function, it's the same thing, just doesn't have the HK markings. And uh, yeah, so for the rest of this video, I'm gonna be referring to this as an MP5K versus the 9KT the entire time because frankly, I just like the name more. Now, quick history on the MP5K as a firearm. It was originally designed by HK in the late 1970s as part of a request from GSG-9, the elite German counter-terror unit. And they needed a gun that was extra small because the original MP5 was already out at that time, but, but they needed something a little bit smaller for certain missions. That way they can easily hide this thing like underneath the seat of a car or in a bag or for executive protection details where you can hide this thing underneath of a coat. Now the original gun looked very similar to this, minus all of the attachments, obviously, because obviously they didn't have that stuff back then. But in practice, this is how you're supposed to fire the thing using a push-pull method where you're pushing with your firing hand and pulling back with your support hand. And this is supposed to stabilize the gun in combination with sling retention using a single point sling or bungees. Now, minus all of the attachments, this is how the gun shipped. It also had a little hand stop at the end here underneath this M-lock rail, which the gun did come with. And it came with this back plate right here where you're supposed to attach a single point sling. The gun also came with a single point sling along with an extra magazine. Now the push-pull method worked pretty good with the original MP5Ks because those original guns were full auto. And it's actually been found that the guns were easier to make hits with, with full auto bursts using this method versus doing semi-auto. And because of this, they then came out with the MP5K PDW, which included a stock. Now, along with the stock, the original MP5K PDW also came with a muzzle device, very similar to the one that you see here. Obviously, you have the trilugs, which MP5s are very well known for. And underneath this thread protector up here, you have threads. So you have options on the type of suppressor you wanna use. Now, if you guys wanna watch a really good video that goes over the entire history of the MP5K, Nine Hole Reviews has a really good video on it. And in today's video, we're just gonna be going over my experience shooting this particular gun and how I have it set up. Now, as far as I'm tracking, the MP5K PDW is one of the first guns to actually have that name. PDW or personal defense weapon. And I really, really wanted a gun um, that would actually fit that role for my own uses because I didn't have one. All I had was pistols and rifles and I really wanted a gun that I could take more places that would give me a little bit more firepower than just a standard concealed carry handgun. Now, another thing that drew me to the MP5K in particular, admittedly, was watching movies as a kid. This might date me, but I remember watching the first Matrix movie in theaters, and there's that scene where Neo's in the white room right before the Morpheus rescue, and he says, Guns. Lots of guns. And he does the HK slap, and I remember watching that movie and always wanting an MP5K after seeing that because it is iconic and is one of like the main stars of action movies when it comes to guns being used, especially during the 90s. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over my MP5K setup, the reasons why I set it up the way I did, my experience shooting this particular gun, and how I think a gun like this, not just an MP5K, but PDWs in general, are one of the more useful guns for a civilian to have that's above just a standard carry pistol. Now, before we get into it any further today, guys, I just wanna mention that today's video is sponsored by Boss Lock, or the Biometric Optimized Safety Lock. Now, what this is, is a fingerprint scanning safety device that you can add to the end of your pistols. This one is for a Glock. They have multiple different versions out there. What this thing is really designed for is homes with kids in it, like this one. Usually, I have three little kids running around here, and even though they are trained on the rules of firearm safety, I'm still not gonna trust to have loaded guns just sitting around that are within a child's reach. Of course, I do have rifles and pistols around the house that are loaded and ready to go, but those are only in spots that only I can reach. And what's kind of cool about a device like this is that I could take this gun and put it in a room that is away from those other guns, put this thing in a drawer, and I'm not gonna have to worry about my kids getting to it and setting it off. Even though I trust my kids not to do that, let's say that 
something has happened and I'm away from those other more set up guns, if I have a gun in a drawer that I typically wouldn't store a gun, I have access to this thing and I can fight to those other guns or respond accordingly. Now how this thing works is as you can see it attaches to the Picatinny rail on the bottom of your gun and there's a little bar right here which prevents you from loading around into the gun. And how it works is you have a little pad right here which you depress your finger on, unlocks that bar and you can load the gun. Also you guys I think if you're a parent this thing is a pretty cool device. If you don't have kids of course this is probably not the device for you. You can leave loaded guns around your house all you want but if you do have kids around I'm not going to trust my kids to have that same type of level of responsibility. Who knows maybe they have friends over and who knows if their parents actually instructed them on firearm safety. So I think this is a pretty cool device and if you want to go check it out go check it out over at Boss Lock and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Now I'd also like to mention that all the ammo I used in the testing of this gun was provided by Badlands Ammunition thanks to you guys because I have a discount code there. If you go to the website and use code BLUEGEAN at checkout, it gets you a discount there and it helps out the channel because the more ammo that you guys buy, the more they are willing to send me. So go check out Badlands Ammunition. Now the first upgrade I made to this gun to make it a little bit more usable for what I wanted it for because I wanted a gun that was going to provide a little bit more capability than just my standard concealed handgun and I found that the sling retention slash push pull method was of dubious use with just a semi-auto gun so the first thing I wanted to do was add some type of stock or brace to it and that's what I did. I replaced the original uh, back plate with this one right here from JMAC Customs that has uh, 1913 Picatinny rail on the back here so that way you can add whatever stock or brace adapter that you want on there. And I also got this JMAC Customs arm bar. This is the eight inch version along with the brace adapter. The actual brace is a Gearhead Works tail hook brace and I think that this thing is awesome. But with this brace setup, it made this gun a lot more easy to shoot, especially accurately and provided the capability that I was looking for. As you can see, the JMAC arm bar is a folder, so I could fold it off to the side right here. Right now, I have it folded to the left side. I might change this up because I know the original MP5Ks had it folding to the right. Right now, I just folded it to the left because that is what I'm most used to when it came to like AK side folders. And even when it's like this, it doesn't really get in the way of the function. I can still pull it out of a bag with the brace actually folded and still actuate the safety um, along with the uh, charging handle up here. It doesn't get in the way. And with this type of setup, it makes it very easy to stow in a bag. I actually stow it in the bag that you see right here quite regularly. This is an old Vertex Gamut backpack and this is like the bag that I carry every day and travel with. And I wanted a gun that I could stow in this thing without it looking weird. Because when you get larger guns and have to use more oblong bags that don't look like standard backpacks. It's usually like a dead giveaway that you're carrying something other than normal uh, civilian stuff in there. You're probably carrying a gun, especially for the trained eye. So I wanted a gun that I can literally stow almost anywhere. I probably can make this gun a little bit more low profile by lowering the optic as well as going with 20 round magazines, but it's not a huge issue. I could pretty much put this gun in any normal size bag that I have. I've seen a lot of people argue about guns like this that are chambered in pistol calibers and saying that you should just carry a super short 300 blackout or something like that, which I totally get. Those guns definitely have their place, but you're still not gonna be able to get it as small as this and be able to carry it in your daily life without it inhibiting you. I'd say that a gun like this for normal civilian life or even during uncertain times during like civil unrest, that nine millimeter would definitely handle most of the threats that you would be facing. Um, if you're going through like a riot and if you think about the typical rioter, nine millimeter will still definitely get the job done. And if it doesn't do it the first time, shoot them some more. They crave it. Now this is what led me to go down the PDW rabbit hole in getting a gun like this and the capabilities that a gun like this can provide. Rifles definitely still have their place. If I'm defending my home or my property, I'm still 110% using my AR-15 or even my AK over a gun like this. But we can argue about ballistics all we want. I'm not gonna be able to carry a gun like this in the public. I live out in the country, so it's not a huge issue for me when I'm patrolling around my property here, kind of checking things out. This is the gun that I'm bringing around here, but I'm not taking this into Raleigh, for example, when I'm going out with my family. But a gun like this is a lot easier to take with me and integrate into my normal life where it's not something that's super abnormal and people wouldn't know that I'm actually carrying a little sub gun. And it's not fully automatic. 
you get the idea. All right, guys, now we're gonna do a quick drill to see how long it takes me to deploy this weapon out of this bag. I have a couple of steel targets out here. I have these two small little popper targets right here, and I have two steel targets. I have a reduced size Ipsight target right there, thanks to TA Targets. So a big thank you to them for providing the targets for my range. If you need any targetry for your range, go check out TA Targets. But I have that reduced size Ipsight steel, and I have a full size Ipsight steel past that at about 100 yards. So we're gonna test out how fast it takes for me to get two hits on each of these steel targets at a couple of different ranges, I'm um, just deploying out of this bag. So let's see how fast it takes me. All right guys, before we start this, my shot timer has miraculously ran out of battery. So we're gonna get the time in post. So if you can give me a quick beep here. Oh God, oh fuck, 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 oh God, oh fuck. All right, let's see how fast that was. All right, guys, round two. Now I have the zippers appropriately staged um, at the top of the backpack. So if you have a gun inside of a bag, it is important to have your stuff staged. That way it is easily accessible. So let's try this one more time. Give me a beep. Oh, gotta fuck, oh, gotta fuck, oh, gotta fuck. That seemed a little bit faster. And again, it was because I had the zippers in my bag appropriately staged at the top versus me kind of searching around for where those zippers were. So if you do have a bag like this and you have a gun in it and you do plan on using this as like your you know, reaction to a shit hits a fan scenario, have your stuff properly staged. Um, that way you're not fumbling around with it like I did in the first run. Now, as you can see on the side of the arm bar, I have a Ranger band that's just wrapped around it. And the reason I have this is to stow the sling. That way, when I have this thing stowed in a bag, it's not gonna get tangled up and things like that. And when I go to deploy the stock, I literally just pull it out and the sling is ready to go. I am running a standard two point sling on this gun. I typically despise single point slings. I just wanted something that was a little bit more familiar to me because this is how I generally run my rifles as well. And I still think that two point slings, even on a small gun like this, are superior than single point slings. I'm tracking that there are certain guns that cannot use two point slings. I'm pretty sure the MP9 can only use a single point sling. But I really like this setup. As you can see on this Gearhead Works uh, brace, I do have the sling attached. There is a sling attachment point on this thing. And I'm pretty sure I had this thing on backwards. Originally, I was kind of worried because the button release is on the back here and I was worried that I was gonna hit with my shoulder and this thing was gonna release. There's no danger of that happening. You really, really have to depress this thing in and yank to get this thing to release. Um, but the reason why I flipped it around is so I can have the sling attachment on the right side, which is how I have my rifle set up. The sling that I'm using is a low profile white tree armory sling. All of my slings are from white tree armory. Usually on my rifles, I use the patent ones, but I want something a little bit more low profile and this thing works out very well. Um, so people argue about padded slings and unpadded slings all you want. It's all up to personal preference. And I think this works out very well for a gun like this. If you want to go check them out, go check them out over at White Tree Armory over on Instagram. They make excellent slings. Now, one thing I really like about this particular MP5K is where they have the optic attachment point. So as you can see, there is a Picatinny rail that is welded to the top here. And versus where you would typically mount an optic on an MP5, like with a claw mount, which usually mounts up here to the front, this one's mounted a little bit further back. And the problem with having optics mounted up here is it gets in the way of the charging handle. Um, I actually saw this on Nine Hole Reviews video on their MP5K setup. So I do like that PTR decided to put their optic attachment point back here. And the optic that I'm using up here is a Novus MDS-3. This is a clone of the Russian Visor optic from Zenico. Um, I talked about this optic briefly during my last AK video and this thing works out very well. One thing I really like about this thing 
is that on this um, riser right here, you can actually still use the iron sights. You can actually look through the space right here. So if the optic went down or something like that, I could still use the irons. The irons that came with this gun are the HK Castle type of sights, which I have heard are better versus the peep sight, especially when you're using like the push pull method out here. And they were very well zeroed when I first test fired this gun, when I got the stock. I did test fire it with that like push pull method quickly found that it was kind of terrible. So when I really test fired this thing, when I got, or excuse me, when I got the brace, I was regularly able to hit my 140 yard target out there with ease, with just the irons. Uh, they say that they zeroed these things at 25 yards with a six o'clock hold. And as far as the optic goes, I zeroed it at 25 yards as well, which I do think is the range that you should zero a gun like this. And this gun is very accurate. I'm able to hit out well past what it's typical effective range would be considered, again, about 140 yards, able to ping the target back there with relative ease. Now, moving up to the front here, this is where things get a little interesting. The gun did come with a proprietary little M-lock handguard where you have a one M-lock slot on the right side, one on the bottom, and one on the left side. And what I was really struggling with since I was new to mounting attachments to a little gun like this was figuring out how to mount a light to this thing because I wanted to use it for defensive use and I needed to mount a light. And what I came up with was adding a little Picatinny section on the right side and mounting the device that you see right here. This is a Defense Distributors GL4 Pro. This thing is a pretty badass little device. It is a light laser combo with viz settings as well as IR. So you have a white light, you have a green laser, you have a white light slash green laser. You also have an IR laser, an IR illuminator, as well as an IR laser slash illuminator combo. I have a whole review on this thing and I figured it would be perfect on a gun like this because this little device is not the most powerful laser and illuminator out there as well as white light. It does okay, it's got about a 400 lumen white light, but this thing is good out to about 100 yards and since this is pretty much a 100 yard and in gun, a little bit further if you really push it out there, I figured this would be perfect. Um, and all I do was reach under with my thumb like you see right here and use a little switch and it is very easy to activate. Um, I was originally trying to figure out how to mount a light over here because I was kind of inexperienced in setting up an MP5K. And the main problem with doing that is it gets in the way of the charging handle. But with a setup like this, especially in conjunction with a grip right here, this is a Fab Defense little angle grip, which I had, which I originally had on an AR-15, but I saw the thing and I figured if I mounted it backwards, it would be perfect for this gun. If I mounted it the other way, it would get in the way of this magazine. And since it is an angled grip, it doesn't break any laws and is perfect for a gun that is using a pistol brace. Now this particular light setup would work with other lights out there as well, not just the GL4, like an X300 that has a very similar uh, tail cap to it. Uh, just be careful if you mount a light on here that it doesn't extend too far back because you wouldn't be able to reach it with your thumb. But overall, I really like this setup and since it has a bunch of different functions on it, if I wanted to shoot this thing at night and just use the IR uh, settings, I could definitely do that. But usually how I would run with this thing out in public was just with white light because typically I'm not carrying nods on me. Overall, I think this is a pretty badass setup. One thing that I haven't done to it yet is suppress it. Don't have a suppressor for this thing yet. I'm still up in the air on what type of suppressor that I'm gonna be using with this thing. My gut instinct is to say a dead air Wolfman, but if there's a different suppressor that you think would be better on this thing, please let me know down in the comments and let me know because uh, fairly new to the world of nine millimeter suppressors. I've had good luck with my dead air Sandman S, so kind of sticking to what I know. But if you guys think there's a different suppressor out there, which you think would be better, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Sometimes I take your advice, Sometimes I don't, we shall see. Now that we've talked about the setup of this particular gun, how has the reliability been on this gun? So what they say on their box is that it takes about a 200 round break-in period, which I've shot well past. I'm into 600 rounds so far on this particular gun, which I haven't opened it up yet or cleaned it at all. So if that's anything to say about the reliability of these guns, um, it has been very reliable. I haven't had a single malfunction with this particular gun and it has grown on me to be one of the more fun guns that I have to shoot because it's okay to have fun with your guns. Not everything has to have some type of 
weird doomer purpose. Guns are fun. It is okay, despite what Lucas has to say. But this gun has been great. Haven't had a single issue with it. It's been completely reliable, and I have no doubt that this thing would perform when I need it to perform, especially, you know, if uh, some type of wild situation happens. I see this kind of idea kind of float around the 2A community when it comes to guns to have ready to go, like in your vehicle and stuff like that, which part of me um, kind of like likes that idea, you know, having this like kit set up ready to go in your truck, like if the aliens invade, the Russians invade, um, active shooter situation, whatever it is, <laughs> your scenario is. Um, I like this idea, but I think that a gun like this that I can actually take with me and not have sitting in my vehicle is a little bit more practical because, you know, even if that gun that you have sitting in your truck has better ballistics than a nine millimeter gun like this, it doesn't matter if that gun's not on you because if I'm a bad guy and I'm shooting up a place, I'm not gonna worry about the terminal ballistics of a gun that you have in your truck or back at your house. Now, another cool thing about a gun like this or a PDW that you could just store in a normal size backpack, let's say that you had to move through an area on foot, some reason that you had to move away from your vehicle, Let's say you have a rifle inside of your vehicle and all of that kit. What happens with all that stuff? Are you gonna don all of that stuff and move through an area where there's like a riot happening? Uh, what happens when the rioters see you with all that stuff on? What happens when the police? What happens when the military sees you with all that stuff on? So something to consider, but with a gun like this, with just a backpack that has other essentials in it, I could have this thing stowed in my backpack and quickly deploy this thing if I ever really needed to do so, but for the most part, I would have this thing concealed inside the backpack or underneath of a shirt or a jacket like you see right here if I wanted to still have it on my person, but be able to kind of disguise the fact that I'm carrying this much firepower on me. So something to consider, Met TC. I'm not telling you guys what you need to do, but in my opinion, I think that a gun like this, stowed in a bag, is much more practical than like a direct action kit set up inside of your truck. The purpose of a gun like this is not to fight off the commies or a tyrannical government where the enemy is more than likely wearing body armor. The purpose of this gun is to protect yourself against the public, like during riots and stuff like that, or during civil unrest, similar to what we saw in 2020. And I think that we're in for that this year. It is the election year, and we've already had someone try to kill former President Trump. So I think we're in for a wild ride. And again, this thing will definitely handle the typical rioter. Uh, if you shoot him in the chest with nine millimeter, it's more than likely gonna put them down. And if it doesn't, again, just shoot them some more. Well guys, that's about it when it comes to my MP5K setup. This is not the last time that you're gonna be seeing this gun. I do have some more plans for it in the future. Again, I really wanna suppress this thing, but you know, there's some other things I wanna try out as well. And overall, I think that this is a pretty cool setup for what I you know, intend this gun to be used for. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, if you wanna get involved with the channel even more directly, I got Patreon, helps me buy guns, gear, ammo, all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel. And it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.